Hello and welcome to Studio 90 Extra Time. Today, we have U.S. Defender Jonathan Bornstein. Yeah. Jonathan Bornstein, our very first guest here on our Studio 90 set. What do you think of the set? Oh, I think it's awesome. I think we got a good setup going on here, and let's hope it's a good show. We're a high budget, big budget show here. I, I can tell. Yeah. All right, so the U.S. team arrived yesterday, mm -hmm. and since you're our first guest, we want to ask you how the travel day go, uh, how the arrival go here in South Africa. Uh, you know, well, we started off on uh, a pretty long bus ride. It was around two and a half, three hour bus ride from, I think it was Philly to D.C., where we flew from D.C. to uh, Dakar. And, you know, the flight wasn't actually that bad. I got some sleep, watched a couple movies. Um, you know, it was eight hours to Dakar. Then we stopped and refueled, and then it was another eight hours to Johannesburg from Dakar. And so, you guys got a, a very nice reception when you arrived here at the hotel. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was amazing, actually. We had, uh, I actually got it all on video on my camera, and, you know, there, there was probably, probably around 20 to 30 South Africans who were singing and dancing and put on a little show for us. You know, you know I think the whole team really enjoyed it, and uh, it was a good, good way to start the trip off. So you're no stranger to South Africa. You played in a friendly in 2007. You also played in the Confederations Cup here. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of what's your feel for how the fans are getting ready uh, for this tournament? Uh, well, you know, from, I'd say the progression of the fan base from when I was here in 2007 for the Friendly to even Confed Cup was a huge, you know, growth. Um, I think they brought out the Vuvuzelas in Confed Cup, which was, you know, a way that they make noise like no other. I mean, you can't even hear each other on the field. So I'm expecting, you know, the World Cup crowd to be very similar, if not even bigger. Uh, I expect it to be a, a great hit, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, playing in front of everyone. All right, let's go back... Uh a little bit. You're only uh, 25 years old. Mm -hmm. um, your first World Cup. You're just a kid from, from Orange County, from Los Alamitos, California. Uh, yeah. Did you ever just take a step back and, and be like, man, this happened really fast. You know, here I am at a World Cup. Yeah, I mean, if I go back to my first national team game, um, you know, it, it, well, it doesn't seem that long ago, first of all, but you know, I never expected to even be playing you know, in that magnitude of a game, let alone you know, be representing our country and you know, being named to the final roster for a World Cup. So, you know, growing up, it was obviously one of my dreams, but I never really, you know, thought it all through, and I never really expect, you know, knew what to expect if I got here. So uh, I'm just enjoying every moment of it and, you know, trying to stay as humble as possible. Of course, you scored your first goal in 2007 in your debut. Mm -hmm. It was also Bob Bradley's debut. Um, but the goal, or L goal, as it's called maybe in Honduras, um, <laughs> was, of course, against Costa Rica yeah. uh, in Washington, D.C., the USA's final World Cup qualifier. 95th minute, seriously 30 seconds left in the game. It tied the match 2-2, uh -huh. won the group for the United States, and more importantly yes. for the Hondurans, set Honduras uh, to the World Cup for the first time since 1982. So um, anyone who was there was watching on TV. I mean, it was an amazingly dramatic moment um, for two countries. Can you sort of just take us back to that play and the, and the corner kick and what you saw? Well, the, we got the corner kick. We won the corner kick, and I was kind of standing in half field with Stevie Cherendolo, and I looked over at him, and it was really late in the game, and, I, and we had lost Gooch also, so we were a man down. And I looked over at him, and I said, hey, one of us should go in the box because we need an extra number. And, I mean, what, it's, the whistle's basically going to blow after this corner kick. So I, I, I took it upon myself to just go into the box, and – I don't think anyone really expected me to be in there because they didn't mark me up. And, you know, Robbie Rogers put in a good ball, and it was just kind of floating up there, and I, I was running toward it and uh, kind of just jumped for it. And in that moment, I don't even really remember just, you know, how it all happened. And just kind of, you know, you practice those plays in, in training, and, you know, you had those balls, you know, 100 times, but, you know, in practice. So, uh, yeah, it was just kind of second nature. Just got my head on the ball and put it near post, and, it got past that first guy at the post, and it went in, and you know, the celebration. I didn't even know what to do. It was a great, it's a great celebration. I was just trying to get to the corner flag because right. the whole team could join in. Because right. I saw guys on the sidelines running over there, and so, you know, they did a big dog pile. Which, I mean, anytime you can include the whole team, right. I think it's pretty it's true. awesome. It was the guys on the field and the bench dog pile. That's exactly, the best that was the best. Um, speaking of the people of Honduras, <laughs> uh, many people heard that the president of Honduras at that time not the president anymore, yeah. offered you an, an expense-paid vacation to uh, Honduras. Yeah. He was quoted in the paper the next day. Um, he said, we'll bring this gringuito who scored the <laughs> header. I think he's calling you skinny. I'm not sure. Um, he, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> he doesn't need a visa to come here to Honduras. We yeah. shall thank him. 
Now, I know you never made it down there, but uh, yeah. are, you, are you thinking maybe you will? I mean, eventually I do want to go there. Um, but, uh, you know, and all the people keep saying, you've got to come to the country. It's beautiful. I think he, the president invited me to the Bay Islands, right. which is probably the most beautiful part of their country is what I've been told. And so uh, I definitely want to make it down there, yeah. All right, last question uh, of this segment. Um, your grandfather, uh, your uncle, and your brother uh -huh. uh, run a catering company slash sandwich shop uh, near the Home Depot Center in Los Angeles yeah. called Apple Spice Junction. Mm -hmm. I can say firsthand that it's delicious. I haven't uh, eaten lunch there many times. Yeah. Um, but we want to know what your favorite sandwich is at the Apple Spice Junction. Oh, well, I order just about the same thing every time I get the turkey avocado um, with a side of chicken tortilla soup. And I just dip the sandwich into the soup, and it's pretty amazing. All right, it does sound delicious. I think maybe, yeah. now that you made the World Cup team, maybe they should name a sandwich after you. Well, I've been yeah, trying to get them to na name a sandwich after me for a long time, but uh, hopefully this will add to that factor. And yeah. All right, once maybe your grandfather sees this, maybe he'll, maybe he'll, yeah, he'll, he'll pump it up. I know. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's all we have for you on this segment of Studio 90 Extra Time, but we're coming back, and we're going to have some fan questions from Johnny that we got on our Twitter account. Plus, we just might ask him to make us a sandwich. We'll be right back on Studio 90 <laughs> Extra Time. Woo! Yeah! yeah. <laughs>